Hey guys, hope you're doing good. Uh, I've had a real, I've been real busy. Work's real busy. Been working a lot, but um, having a nice day off today. Got a lot of work done around the house and things done: shopping, groceries, um, cleaning, washing clothes, stuff like that. Um, I just wanted to make this video as a, I don't know, just to make uh, a little share, a little bit of my experience with the uh, um, heartfulness, with the Sahaj Marg practice. So um, I started out doing Transcendental Meditation. In 1993, I learned Transcendental Meditation. I had about one year left in the Air Force at that time. And um, I had come home on leave, and one of my friends that uh, I grew up with, worked with, we worked together at um, Wendy's, the fast food restaurant. I worked there when I was in high school. And um, he said, oh, I, I learned this um, this meditation. It's called Transcendental Meditation. You got to do it. It's so it's so great. You, you, just, you just have to do it. And so um, I contacted the TM Center in Tucson in Arizona where I lived. And I learned Transcendental Meditation with the teacher. And there was a small group of us. Um, there's about, I think about three or four of us that learned. And um, we would meet and do these meditations together and talk about our experiences and stuff. It was really cool. Uh, the teacher was real wonderful and a real nice lady. And I had really amazing experiences with it. I mean, uh, I had some really amazing experiences uh, the, the first bit. And I was kind of hooked in, you know, I was, I was like, oh, this is really, this is something else, you know. And there was a lot of, um, a lot of, um, I don't want to call it propaganda because that's not a nice word, but they, you know, they pushed for certain things. They, um, they were pushing for you to, like everybody, if everybody got two other people or three other people to learn meditation, and what they were building for, the the whole idea behind transcendental meditation is, Maharishi called it the Maharishi effect. So if you've got a certain percentage of people um, meditating, it would have an effect on the consciousness of the planet. And I, I can't remember the exact number, but it was, it was a percentage, like a, a percent of a percent. I mean, it was a very low number, really, relative to the total population, but it had a profound effect. Now, whether this is really true or not, I don't know, but I'm, I really do believe it, it helped pave the way for what we're seeing now. So all these um, meditation movements um, that have come through, um, like Yogananda, he came in the 50s and taught meditation. And um, there was other gurus, uh, Maharishi, I'm sure there's a lot of other ones that I don't even know about. And you know, Maharishi was big. It, the TM movement was very big. And when I was, when I learned it, I think it was definitely on a decline. It was, it was on its decline. It was still, it was still doing, they were doing these big, they call them groups for government. And they would get as many meditators together as possible for this like retreat. And everyone would meditate together and create this. And um, they called it um, coherence. So you're creating a coherence in the environment. I mean, it all is really cool. It, it's it sounds very um scientific and it's very um they try to be very evidence based. You know, they had a lot of um, psychologists and people who were PhDs and they would do studies on people's brain waves and show that their brain waves changed and were in a more more coherent state when they were meditating. And you know, it's all real. It was all really cool. It was. Um, but it was very scientific. It was very um, empirically based. It wasn't. It wasn't like a feeling of like your heart opening and things like that. Now, some people had experiences similar to that. Um, some of the earlier meditators, uh, when they first started, I think the movement was a little different. There was a lot more of the open heartedness, and Maharishi talked about love and God and things like that. And then later. You know, he was talking more from a level of um, just, you know, expanded consciousness and more of it on a scientific level. Like, um, you know, John Hagelin, he, he, be, he was a big leader in the movement. He's a, he was a scientist, a physicist, and um, he actually became a candidate for the 
Natural Law Party, which was a political party um, that was affiliated with the TM movement. And, um, and needless to say, I mean, it was it was interesting. So I went to, you know, MIU, Mauritius International University, and I studied there. I, I was I worked on staff actually. I was I just got out of the Air Force. I was, um, I was really into meditating. I thought I was really like, wow, this is going to be, you know, this is it right here. You know, this is the thing. This is the thing to be doing. And um, so I moved up to MIU from it was in Iowa. I moved from Idaho. I drove out there, and I worked on staff. And I worked in the kitchen cooking food for the first uh, little while. And then I got a job working in the, in the they had a like a, they call it Panchakarma. It's a Vedic uh, healing center based on Vedic knowledge, but it's Maharishi Ayurveda. So it's Ayurvedic, but it was Maharishi's version of Ayurveda. So it was supposedly a more purified, streamlined version. And um, it was, it was okay. I mean, it was good, but it wasn't something I wanted to do forever. And I eventually um, was able to just save enough money to get out of there because at some at, after my second year, right, I just decided, okay, this is it's time for me to go. This isn't. I'm not going anywhere here in terms of my life and career and um, having a job and all that. So I thought, well, I'm going to go home and um, start over. So I went back to Idaho. I studied massage therapy. Um, I worked as a taxi driver. My dad knew a guy who owned a taxi company. It ended up being a great job. Um, at first, I didn't want to do it because I had these preconceived notions. Oh, taxi drivers, you know, you hear the, the stereotypical stuff. and um, But it was a great job for a young guy who was basically, I was going to um, massage school. And then I started taking college classes and um, eventually got into the respiratory program. So I became a respiratory therapist. And all this while, I'm, you know, really into meditating and I had also learned a different meditation technique when I was in Iowa. It was um, the art of living. I've talked about it in my other videos, but um, I was doing art of living. So I was doing art of living. I was doing um, TM. I was um, doing the advanced TM, which is the TM city program. And cities means power. So the TM city program is this um, you meditate, you get in a, a relaxed state, it takes about 20, 30 minutes, and then you... Um, then you start basically saying these mantras in your mind. It, it's it's basically what I what they it, it's a it's kind of like manifesting. It's learning how to manifest. That's the closest I can come to describe it. Um, you're using these these you're saying these sounds these words they're words in your mind when you're in a deep state of meditation, and it, it allows you to. Um, kind of start to learn how to operate on that more subtle level. Uh, it was real interesting. I had some interesting experiences with that. Um, one of the TM cities, the big one they really sell everybody on is the, oh, there's an airplane coming, sorry. They try to, they, they really sold everybody on the TM cities, um, the flying sutra, the flying program. So they would, get these soft foam mats and you would start saying this mantra, this flying meditation mantra at the end. It was kind of like the, it was, it was the one that really was supposed to create the most coherence. And the whole concept of it is you would levitate. You'd be able to levitate, levitate if you did this, um, you did this mantra. And I did it. Um, I, 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 you start to hop, you have a hopping, your body will kind of pop off the ground. And that's why they use the mats. And um, it sounds really far-fetched. It sounds really crazy, but I had a really powerful experience with that when I first, when I was um, doing the city's program, because I worked on staff for a year to earn the program. And then I went and did the program in Washington, DC. They had a course there for, um, they called it group for a government. So it was a big course. It was a lot of fun. It was awesome. Um, great experience. But I had really amazing experiences with the cities. I was popping all over the place. I mean, I felt like I was, I didn't feel like I was going to levitate, but I felt like my body became weightless and then I'd come back down and become weightless and then come back down. So it was legit. I mean, this is real. This is real stuff. This is a technology. And um, 
and it, it was really great. Um, but like I say, you know, you, you get on with your life and you, I kind of got away from doing the city so much. It's very time consuming. It was, you know, you basically you're looking at at least two hours a day of meditating. And, um, it's kind of like, it's always pushing for more meditation. It's like, if something's wrong, meditate more. If, if something's not going right, meditate more. Everything, the solution to every problem is to meditate more. And, um, you know, it's hard to do stuff like that when you're raising a family and you're doing this, uh, you're working and doing things like that. So needless to say, over the years, you know, I, I, I meditated less and less, got to a point where I'd just meditate maybe once a day, maybe once every other day. And I got to a, a point where I was kind of just felt spiritually just, I was, I was not dialed in at all. I felt disconnected from God. I was unhappy. Sorry, they're flying some planes. And I just was really depressed. I really went through some hard times. Um, uh, and I started, you know, on the internet, I started listening to Paul and uh, Pockets of the Future. And I started listening to him. And I had had a premonition years ago probably during the time I was doing meditation, doing TM. I can't remember the exact year, but it was a long time ago. But I had a premonition once uh, that I would learn that what I was supposed to learn wasn't this. It would be something else, and it would be I would get into it through an American man. I don't know how to explain it other than that. It was just popped into my head. And um, so when – but I didn't remember any of this, so – I started listening to Paul and he was, I liked him a lot. And he started talking about heartfulness and, and all that. And they offered the, I think it was 2017 when I first started it. And they just offered the online free, the free online course. And I was like, you know, it's free. And I, I'm going nowhere with the TM. I wasn't planning on stopping TM, but I, I was like, I'll give this a try, you know. I'll see what happens. And so I, I learned, um, I did the program, you know, that Kamlesh Dodgy, Kamlesh Patel Dodgy, the president of the system, he, he takes you through like a three day course and you do a meditation you do several meditations and it was awesome. I mean, it was totally amazing. Here I am sitting in my computer and I just feel like this just incredible love and just, expansion. I mean, it was awesome. And, you know, they tell you to write a little journal of your experiences and I did, and it was just really beautiful. And so, um, I started doing that and I basically quit doing TM completely and it took some time, you know, it's, it's always an adjustment. I'm still adjusting, you know, you, you're always questioning whether it's the right thing for you or not, but I wanted to say something that kind of come up. Um, so Dodgy's birthday was um, a couple of weeks ago. Maybe it was even longer ago. I don't know. Time flies by so fast, but maybe it was three or four weeks ago. And when the presidents of the system, the past presidents have, have a birthday, they celebrate it with meditations and things. Well, I wasn't able to do all the meditations with the group, but I did a few. And But I had this thought, and it was like a, another, you know, almost like an intuition or whatever, that Dodgy was just, like almost sending me like love, like a, you know, you know, when you walk into like a, like a Costco or something, they have those radiant heaters and it's kind of far away, but you feel the heat coming off of it. You can feel that radiant heat. That's what it felt like. It felt like that just pure love. And he was sending out love to everybody, you know, on his birthday. And, um, that's what I got from it anyway, but it was very subtle. And I was like, Oh, is that real? You know, it's kind of like one of those things where you go, is that real? Is that real? And, um, but I realized today that he, what he's doing is he's slowly melting our hearts. He's, our hearts have been encased. Like it's kind of like, um, you know, those caveman shows where they, they find this caveman in ice and then they defrost him and he comes back to life. Well, our heart is kind of like that. It's been, it's been frozen and it's in this, um, kind of a frozen state. It's not able to really work properly because it's been shut down. And, um, these guys, these, um, guides, these masters, if you want to call them masters, I like to call them guides, um, friends, you know, 
they're they're sending this love out to us to melt our hearts to melt this this kernel of ice that's around our heart and uh, it's really beautiful it's really profound and it's something that you know all those years i i wanted something for meditation i i wanted i wanted power i wanted something i thought i was supposed to be getting something and um with with heartfulness i realized that i don't want anything except for connection to god i don't care about anything else that's all i want i don't want special powers i don't want to levitate i don't want to fly around i want to just connect to god that's all that matters that's the only thing that matters and these guides are giving us this impulse this they're giving us this pranahuti they call it pranahuti in the heartfulness system the forceless force and it's so subtle but it's that love it's that pure love and as you get more as you become more subtle and more rarefied your heart gets more and more open and more able to connect to that and to you know the the light of the divine is in our own heart and we connect to that divine light in our own heart the master is just simply sending this love to us until we can reconnect with our own divine light it's really powerful it's really beautiful i just wanted to share that with you and um hope it's hopefully it's kind of an inspiration have a good day